Thank you, Madam Chairman, and uh, thank you to the witnesses uh, uh, for for appearing today. Um, you know, we've we've talked a little bit about the deployment or lack of deployment of the National Guard. Um, and one of the questions, I guess, Mr. Sund, uh, or frankly, or Chief Conte, you know, the fact that we, the, the district did not have the ability to um, uh, bring the guard to the table uh, because of, um, frankly, the fact that they're not a state and Mayor Bowser is not treated, I think, in a, in a totally fair fashion in this. Um, this may be outside your lane, but um, um, her inability to, to bring the guard to the table, and actually any of you on the, the panel can answer this, uh, you know, that to me is a reflection of um, the disempowerment of the district. On a going forward basis, at least in terms of being able to deploy the guard, shouldn't the mayor of the District of Columbia have the ability to, to do that without the, all the additional hurdles they have to go through in terms of federal check, checklist? Yes, I absolutely agree with that. Does anybody else want to answer on that question as well? Uh, yes, sir. I'm uh, happy to add in. I think we, we have an established process for the Capitol Police to, to make the request through the Capitol Police Board that is also equally as effective. Well, again, I, I feel like the um, long-term discrimination against the district, uh, we've, we've seen it in some of the COVID legislation where they uh, did not receive the same kind of level of support that um, other states did. Uh, we saw it uh, play out real time in terms of on January 6th, the, the um, hurdles from the previous administration. I actually have concerns whether the, the deployment of the guard was affirmatively slowed down. Um, um, I hope that we in the Congress will, uh, as a supporter of DC statehood, I'd like to see that move forward, but even short of that, trying to ensure that the mayor has uh, appropriate powers going forward. I know there were some questions already raised about um, the FBI and whether that the intel that came out of the, the Norfolk FBI office was ever, ever fully relayed to uh, all of you individuals. Um, but can you talk more generally about um, the FBI's responsiveness sharing of intelligence? I had a number of conversations. I called Director Ray on Monday, the 4th. Uh, trying to express concerns that there might be this kind of activity. I never expected this level of violence. Uh, I had a number of conversations with senior FBI leadership on the 5th through the 6th. Um, uh, I candidly was, I don't think it, even the full FBI could have been fully informed of all of what was going to come to pass, but I I felt like the FBI felt that we, they were in better shape in terms of intel and preparation than what came to be the case and i'd like each of you to comment on how well you felt that the fbi did in terms of sharing intelligence and then coordinating when the actual activities of the sixth played out so i'll, I'll go ahead and um did you you want me to address that first yeah i, I mean okay. i can't see where y'all are so yeah, if, no, every so one of you can take a crack at that i'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, and start first uh, i think the relationship we have with the fbi is outstanding uh, i think in uh, my time with the metropolitan and my time here uh, we've seen nothing but the relationship get better the construct that we have that's very similar to some of the other major cities is having the joint terrorism task force being involved with that the the information we're getting in uh is is good. I think the, the process and, and having, like I said earlier, the wider lens of what information is being collected, maybe looking at the agencies that are consumers of their uh, information and what their intelligence collection requirements are is something that we need to look at. Uh, but I think, you know, getting that information in and then having it processed and pushed forward in an effective manner is something we need to look at. Uh, I would say uh, on the 6th, when this started happening, you know, immediately the FBI, you know, as being a partner of ours, established a process where with Capitol Police and FBI Police, we can begin to analyze video footage, analyze other evidence to begin going out and making arrests uh, of the individuals that had uh, created the insur insurrection of the Capitol. Yeah, I'll, I'll go next. Uh, was, did we get enough intel beforehand? If we, if we get the balance of the panel to respond. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I would echo what, uh, what Chief Sun uh, just mentioned. Uh, I, we've had a great working relationship with the FBI. 
Uh, I think it's a whole of intelligence approach, not specifically just the FBI, when we have something as significant uh, as what occurred here uh, at the U.S. Capitol. Uh, if, you know, if there is information, specific information uh, out there that our government is responding uh, to, I would think that something of that nature would rise to the level of uh, more than just an, an email uh, that's sent uh, to law enforcement agencies. That should be a larger, more involved uh, conversation about specifics. Uh, not, you know, not just uh, uh, some of the unvetted raw information that's out there. We see a lot of that, but I think it's more of a whole intelligence approach, not specifically the FBI. They are great partners to the Metropolitan Police Department. Thank you. Let me just, um, I don't know if any of the other panel members want to uh, want to add any comment on that. Let me just uh, say that this is, my concern is that um, um, you know, in, in Virginia, We've seen these kind of anti-government extremists um, take to the streets of Charlottesville in 2017, uh, resulting in the death of Heather Heyer. Uh, we see the, the same kind of uh, uh, groups come to come to the forefront in, on January 6th. I think this is an ongoing uh, threat to national security. Uh, I fear at times uh, that while the FBI and others have pointed this out, that it didn't get the um, uh, the level of, of serious review uh, that it should have um, uh, with the prior administration. I, I felt at times that they uh, did not want to uh, take the information that was coming out of the FBI. I hope on a going forward basis, we're going to be able to be um, more coordinated in terms of taking on anti-government extremism, whether it comes from the left or the right. Uh, this is a, a real ongoing threat. I, I can tell you from our intelligence committee, We've seen that many of these groups have connections and ties to anti-government extremist groups in Europe, uh, where they've taken a great precedent. I know my time's expired, Mr. Madam Chairman, but uh, this is something we need uh, more work on. Thank you for holding this hearing. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Warner. We look uh, to working with you and the Intelligence Committee on this.